Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Derek's live chat show. This afternoon, I've got uh, a very exciting guest of mine, Jeff Ram. Jeff and I met each other when uh, we joined the board of the Professional Speaking Association a number of years ago. And Jeff and I looked at us, it was on the same day, and we said, what's the strategy? And it was being run by a very nice guy called Peter, doing a great job, but he's being overruled by all these different people. And what I found in associations is that because there's no structure, because there's no hierarchy, often no one takes any notice of anybody. And it's the alpha male and alpha female in, uh, in us all that uh, takes over and everybody wants to speak. And because it's a, a speaking association, guess what? Everyone speaks. Anyway, this meeting went on for four hours. Jeff and I at lunch said to each other, we weren't sure whether we were going to continue on the board after these four hours. But in the afternoon, we had a, a good strategy meeting and we looked at each other and said, OK, let's go for this. I immediately took to Jeff, who was my sort of guy. And that was great. You know, sometimes when you immediately correct, connect with people, Jeff took over the marketing, which he's an expert on. And someone put their arm around me and I became the president and chairman within, within six months. Unbelievable. I don't know how. I fell for that. But what Jeff did was fantastic. He did the marketing behind the scenes and we grew the membership from 250 to 600 members in a period of two years. It's a good job we did because we were hemorrhaging cash like mad and uh, we needed the uh, cash flow from the extra six, the extra 350 members to run it. Jeff and I got some fantastic stories about that, but then we're gonna keep those for another day if you ask, uh, Jeff back. Jeff's giving me a uh, introduction which I'm going to read but I want to show you first of all his two fantastic books that he's written and he's writing another one at uh, this moment in time using the uh, this time to uh, write books etc and I hope you guys are catching up on a few things that you want to do. So here we go with Jeff's intro. Jeff is the creator and author of Celebrity Service. He's challenged and inspired audiences across 42 countries with his award-winning ideas to outperform the competition. His clients include Emirates, Warner Brothers and McDonald's and in a recent feature Forbes called him a game changer. Um, one of the people here, John, has employed Jeff to speak at one of his conferences after he did from me. I got Bulgaria but Jeff got Zurich. Well that just goes to show the way it is. Welcome Jeff to the uh, to my live web chat show. It's Great to have you here. Thanks, Derek. It's a pleasure and hello to everybody. Jeff, what was it that got you into marketing in the first place? Ooh, I, my passion and love from being a child, from being three, four, five years old, has always been marketing. So as a kid, I would remember slogans, logos, adverts, leaflets, everything from the world of advertising, marketing and promotion. I knew at a very early age what I was going to go into. So business studies was my favorite subject at school. Then I studied business and marketing at college. And then I graduated uh, at university with a two one degree in marketing and business studies. Uh, so that was always the path. Marketing was always the path. And it's something that I loved. And the, the ability to think of, create ideas literally in seconds was, was always kind of my forte working with business. So I left university and my first role was as a marketing advisor for startups and small business in city of Durham in the Northeast of England. And these businesses, now I'm going back a few years, Derek, this is before social media, this is before Zoom, before YouTube, before LinkedIn. We literally had the yellow pages, Thompson directory, back of a bus, leaflets, and radio, you know, the, 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 the amount of the ways we could market and promote ourselves was very, very narrow. But businesses didn't have the cash. They didn't, they didn't have those oodles of, of money to say, let's go and do this. So I worked with hundreds of these small businesses for three and a half years, my first role, coming up with ideas, techniques on how we could get traction, promotion, advertising basically get the door knocking get the phone ringing with my marketing ideas with these businesses 
to get them to be a success. And that was, so marketing has always been my sort of first love, as it were, and that was my first role in, in the world of business so, so many years ago now. Fantastic. That's absolutely brilliant. Now, I was thinking, I saw you speak at the National Speaking Convention in Dallas the year yeah. before last, and uh, you brought the house down. But I remember, and which is very unusual for uh, to be in America, a Brit in America doesn't usually get a standing ovation and bring the house down. But um, I remember that uh, an hour before you went on, they told you that your 30 minute talk was cut down to 20 minutes. How did you feel about that in front of 2000 people? You're gonna have to bleep this out. <laughs> okay, so uh, just a bit of context for everybody listening. Okay, so as, as you know, Derek, amazing speaker, negotiation, that is his forte. So this is a conference for speakers. Speakers speaking at a speaking conference. It's a nightmare. Nobody wants, nobody wants to listen. Everybody's given it that. So the, as Derek said, we were Batman and Robin, I suppose, for a few years at the Professional Speaking Association here in the UK. But in America, there's NSA. And that is just a world apart. There's 2,000 speakers from all over the world. About 1,500 are from the US. And it's the most highly charged, the most nerve-wracking I've ever been for, for any talk. But 18 months prior to this date that... Uh, obviously, I saw you and Sally at Derek. I got, I got tipped. I, I got a message on Messenger on my phone saying, uh, "What are you doing on?" And they give the date. And I said, "Why?" And they said, "NSA." I said, "Really?" And they said, "Yeah." I said, "Keynote." They said, "Yeah." And this is a massive thing, huge for for myself. I, I since found out I was the only English speaker, the only Englishman speaker to have ever been asked to speak on their main stage so it was a huge thing so i've i'm excited it's a huge honor i'm representing the uk and off i go to to dallas and i was absolutely fine absolutely fine and i go to rehearsals at 11 o'clock i'm not speaking till four o'clock 11 o'clock in the morning rehearsals i go in and uh they're, they're micing me up and i said oh can i use your clicker i've got Shall I use mine? They said, oh, you have slides. I said, yeah. They said, oh, we, we don't have any slides for you. I said, I sent them. And they're, they're quickly going on the computer going, and it went into some trash folder. They said, yes, you sent them on time. I said, I know. And they said, but it's, it's run, out of, run out of time. And I said, no problem. I bring everything with me. I'm going to go to my room now. I'm going to do the slides and I'm going to resend them to you. So there's no problem at all. Oh, fantastic. And for some reason, Derek, and I've never asked this question, but that, that rocked me. I was thinking, oh, hang on a second. And I said, can I just check that it is 30 minutes? No, it's 20. I said, what? I said, I said where do you get 30 minutes from? I said, here? Confirmation, 30 minutes that I was sent a year ago. Oh, we've, you know, we've changed it. <laughs> and life throws these curveballs at you. I went uh, to my room. I took out a main story. I did something else. I sent it and I just delivered it. Because things happen like this. It's nobody's fault. Stuff happens. But the audience doesn't know that. They don't know what goes behind the scenes of any event or any conference. And as speakers or anybody in the business world, whatever happens, just smile, give them a hug, give them a box of chocolates, get the microphone and just, excuse my friends, bloody give it your all. Um, and it was wonderful. It was, um, again, the most nerve wracking I've, nerve -wracking I've been for a long, long time. And I do this a lot. I do 60, 70 conferences a year, but this was the big one. This is in front of your peers and the, the stress levels and the anxiety and the nerves. Oh, but it was great. And a lovely stand innovation at the end, which was, which was, yeah, yeah it, it means a lot. Great. Jeff, you were, you were fantastic. Jeff, before we return to the business issues that people yeah. might be interested in for themselves, for their family, for their businesses, etc., to, to share with them. You reminded me that when we go into a client to pitch, or to sell often we don't know 
how long how long we've actually got so we might have prepared a one hour presentation and i know lots of presentations are death by powerpoint we know all know about death by powerpoint what are bullet points for they're to kill the enthusiasm of the audience because that's what bullets do but we may the client may say oh thanks for coming in by the way i've got another really important board meeting um you've got 10 minutes and we clearly have to be able to adapt whether in sales whether in presenting and that's all part of the preparation but i remember you coming over whispering in my ear at that conference and uh, using a language that we can't put on zoom <laughs> i mean i was furious you no, were furious. i felt for you i felt your emotions but um but you there we are you you it it's yeah. not a problem no. and if it didn't happen we wouldn't have anything to talk about would it happens all the time every problem's an opportunity now tell me about celebrity service because i remember you saying, are you telling a great story, but uh, summarize it for us. Why would you give David Beckham different service to Mrs. Yeah. Blonds? And I read in your book, which I thought was so funny, the Queen thinks uh, everywhere smells of paint. And I had to think about that carefully. But uh, the Queen turns up, she gets fabulous service. Um, I turn up and often it's, uh, it's terrible. What's your take, Jeff? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there is nothing. So that, that quote was actually Billy Connolly's. It's one of my, Billy Connolly's my favorite comedian. And that to me is, you know, the queen thinks the world smells of paint. I think it's his greatest level line. And it's that whole premise of, you know, wherever she goes, somebody's making an effort to make sure nothing's scratched or nothing, everything's touched up because the queen's coming. You know, so we've got to be on our guard. We've got to be doing the utmost for everything to be perfect. There's nothing new in the world of customer service. For the last 30, 40 years, we hear the same old two things. And everybody on this, uh, watching this video right now has heard the same two things. Every book, manual, speaker, trainer talks about these two things. In order for your business or organization to stand out, and deliver an incredible service, you've got to do two things. The first is, you must always go the extra mile. We've heard this for 40 years. Now, you go back into your team and say, we need to go the extra mile. It's hardly as inspiring. And the other thing people tell you is, you must always exceed expectations. And this is the same two things. The world has moved on. There is nothing new, there's nothing exciting in the world of service but I think I found something. So celebrity service is a philosophy and the philosophy is a question. And you can ask it to yourself, your team, at any communication, any email you're sending out, any text you're sending out, any visit you've got with a client or anybody coming to see you, any touch point in that customer journey, you ask yourself this one question. If they were an A-list celebrity Hollywood star god or goddess and i'm talking here george clooney brad pitt angelina jolie you know the real top stars if they were to become your next customer if they were to tweet you email you walk into your office what would be the difference in service right now and this is the question that i ask audiences all over the world i'll say on a scale of one to ten where would you rate your levels of service if one is abysmal but ten is incredible one is abysmal, 10 is incredible. What number would you give yourself right now? The vast majority of the world will say eight. We get sixes and fives, we get nines, we get, but the vast majority will group themselves in the seven to eight category. What people are saying to me is, Jeff, we're pretty good. We're quite good, but there's always room for improvement. What would it take you to go from an eight to a nine, nine to a 10? What would it take you to go one? And it's that one question. If your next customer, client, member, passenger, guest were an A-list celebrity, what would be the difference in service? What would you say? What would you do? How would you react? What would you wear? Because all of us, and you said about David Beckham, it's exactly the same thing. And, and I had this conversation with a, with a hair salon business um, in Dublin just a, just a few weeks ago. And I said, and I, I said to somebody in the audience, I said, what time, what time do you close? She said, six o'clock. I said, okay. 
and I think she used um, Chris Hemsworth, uh, sort of an, uh, a famous actor. Uh, and I said, okay, so if Chris, if Chris Hemsworth was to fly to Dublin, but he, he emails you first and says, look, I need to get my hair done. I'm on a, I'm on a chat show tomorrow morning, but I don't arrive till half past 10 tonight. I said, would you still be open? She said, oh, yes. And everybody started to laugh. And I said, well, I'm here. Joe Bloggs, Jeff Ram, Derek Arden. I'm going to arrive at 10.30 tonight. Would you still be open for me? And quite often people say, oh, well, you know, no. And there's a gap. There's a gap between what we think we can deliver as a great service, but what we could deliver. And that gap is called celebrity service. So it's a philosophy, Derek, but it's also a nine stage program. I, I broke the word celebrity down into all of the stories that I tell on stage into consistency, excitement, love, engagement, bravado, response, independence, thank you, and you and your team. These nine components you can look at to redesign and redefine your levels of service. And this is what I've been delivering now for about seven years, I think. Seven years worldwide. And the results, because this is we're, we're in the we're in the game of results. You know, a, a speaker without results to show is just a storyteller. We're not storytellers. We can tell great stories, but we are there for results. But the results of for my clients coming back to me days, weeks, months later and saying, because of this, we did this. And because of this, we've got on to achieve that. That's the greatest part of our work that we do. Absolutely. Well, uh, there's a few people scoring themselves in the chat box and don't oh. forget to uh, put some comments, questions. Um, all eights, Jeff. All eights coming oh, I, I, It's the world. It's, a, it's, it's the world average. Congratulations, your average. Yep. Yeah, but uh, you know, there we there we are. So they're all uh, they're all coming in. Um, what Jeff? What about first impressions? You know, I crack on about first impressions to people, and then I look at uh, oh, I look at some speakers in our business yeah. and take a look at them, and I think they're going on stage in an old pair of jeans. What <laughs> is that all about? And I was so cross about it when yeah. Martin Cairns and I, and Martin's on the call, um, we. Um, we did some work for a particular bank. I won't mention it. And because their first impressions were so bad, I got these cards printed for them, for them to write their name on. Director yeah. of first impression. Because they hadn't really uh, twigged that uh, the first impression, the first four seconds, the first nanosecond that some people say now. And then I gave them a job description and put it on the back. I don't know if that's the right way around or the wrong way around, guys, because I do get a Good. Yeah, it works. Is that the right way around? Yeah, perfect. Brilliant. And um, I know there was a company in Perth, Western Australia, I heard about through my pal Mike Ogilvy, who had uh, appointed a director of first impression. And this was just the receptionist, but she had the responsibility. I don't say mean just the receptionist. Receptionists are some of the most important people for your business. But she... Uh, She'd been appointed the director of first impression with responsibility to take care of every first impression that uh, people give. And, uh, you know, telephone first impressions are terrible. And, uh, well, I just laugh at it. What's, what's your take, Jeff? We, we, we judge a book by its cover. We always have, we always will. Um, of course, it can be a bad first impression. We still end up working with them. They're still, they're still great people. You know, we, we can all make mistakes. If I look at this personally, which I suppose is the only really thing I can do right now on this call. Um, yes, I'm in, I'm in casual clothing today. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a chat. This is me and you, good friends, getting together and sharing some stuff, okay? But on stage, I have always, always wore a three-piece suit. Always. And 99% of the time, I'll always wear a tie. Now, to most in the speaker world going on stage now, you know, you, you get these hipsters coming on with jeans and a t-shirt, uh, you know, flexing the muscles and it's great. It's fantastic. But that's not me. That's not me. Some people can get away with trainers or, you know, it, it's, it's the time, it's the audience. Fine. But it's not me. For me, I want to, I want to 
represent myself in the best. I want to be the best looking person at the conference. Take away the face, I'm talking about dress. I want, to be, I, want, I want the shoes to be polished. I want my tie to be different. I want my suit to be a little bit different. Because um, that's what I'm talking about. In, in celebrity service or OMG marketing, I talk about being different and standing out. You can't talk about it and not be it. Um, so it, there's lots of things. Okay, so that's personal. Now, if you, go, if you go to my website, so jeffram.com, so it's G E O F R A M -M M.com, the mothership. For, for anybody's business. So jeffram.com. At the top, there'll be a telephone number. Now that telephone number is a local number for anybody in the UK wants to, wants to call locally, they can, but I don't answer that number. I've got a team that answer it who are, who are wonderful. And then they send me an email because I'm on the road quite a lot. So I can't take that local call. Um, I've also got my mobile there on a contact page, so you can get to me direct. I'm not, I'm not putting up a fence there, Derek. But have a look at, the, at that web page, at the top of the web page. So the telephone number is one thing, is an impression, but I chose, it took me over 15 years to let somebody else take a call for me. You know, this is my baby. My business is my baby. I was very reluctant to pass this over. But have a look at the graphic. Now, there's a photograph on there, on my, on my web page, on my homepage. Um, but you'll see a glass. And there's a glass of ice and the ice is moving. Now that is not a photograph and it's not a video. It's called a cinemagraph. Uh, about three years ago, this technology was, was brand new. And to, to be honest with you, the majority of the world will still be brand new. You won't have seen this often at all. A few websites, a few people have done something really, really cool with it. But it's, it's a technology, piece of technology called cinemagraph. It's a photograph with one moving part. And it might be you're on the website and all of a sudden you'll just blink Derek. And as you're watching, you go, did Derek, did Derek just, did he just blink? And it creates intrigue. That's different. And that's what I want to get across. You know, just by seeing that, that's different. Now that's one of my main holding slides on my slide deck. Uh, when I, when I speak at conferences, every AV team go, how did you do that with the ice? because they don't know how it's done. And it's about me finding, and it's about anybody in business, this is my preference, find something that represents you. You're a little bit different, you're a little bit quirky, you're a little bit whatever it may be. But as a first impression, have everything like this. I'll give you an ex example of the book, and you very kindly put the book up for me, okay? So, so I get an inquiry, an email, Phone call, Twitter, oh, yeah, we get them everywhere now, don't we? LinkedIn. So an inquiry comes in. Hi, Jeff, we've been recommended. I've seen a couple of your videos on YouTube channel. Uh, love that story. Uh, we would love to do celebrity service for our team. Are you available? Um, you know, 20th of August, 2021, for example. Within 10 minutes, I've already picked up the phone to them. As soon as the email comes in, I don't wait a day. Because you might be, they might be asking another two people for the same date. I want to beat you to it. So I'll pick up the phone and say, hi, Derek. Uh, it's Jeff Ram here. I've just got, oh, oh, I've just sent you an email. I said, I know. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a call straight away. I said, no, oh, I, I, I figured you've just emailed me. Hopefully you buy, buy your desk. If you've got two minutes, we'll have a quick chat now. Oh, yeah, no, that'd be great. Tell me about the audience. Tell me about the event. Tell me who you've had. Tell me what you'd love. What are the outcomes? And, and I'll share some stuff. Back to first impressions. Everything you do, every customer touch point along that journey has to be a great first impression. Clothing is one, but of course, I've got to, I've got to get on the stage. I've got to get the deal. I've got to get the contract signed before they can see the togs. I ask the last question. I say to them, and I know the answer is no, but I always ask it. I'll say, do you have a copy of the book, the second edition of Celebrity Service? Oh, no. No, we don't. Tell you what, the proposal, proposal will be on your desk tomorrow morning because I'll email it to them. But also, I'll, I'll hand sign a, a, a personal copy to you. And I said, you'll know it's from me when you see the envelope. And that's all I say. 
And now that, that creates a bit of intrigue, right? Now, I wasn't going to do this today, but I'm, this is the envelope. It's just a shiny envelope. It's a nice padded envelope, but I'll put a nice white label on there. I'll, I'll, I'll hand sign it, put that inside. I'll also do something for the office. I said, look, I've got a couple of things for the office for you. And I know we've got a couple of people from the US. Um, so Dallas, near Dallas, I send these. I have done these for years. I ditched my e-newsletter 10 years ago. And I went back to the future. And I write and send postcards. Great pieces of marketing, great pieces of service and experience. And this is the one I'm sending right now when we're, when we're all uh, in, our, in our homes. So I send these. Again, I said, put them on your wall. And whether we work together or not, there's some great ideas there for your team. So Brilliant. Brilliant. so many things we can discuss about first impressions. Is it important? Yes. Is it, a, is it a breaker, deal breaker? Not all the time, but from initial inquiry to the first call to you sending information, bloody make it great. We're on this, we're on this planet just once. Make every experience a great one for, for somebody receiving. Fantastic advice, Jeff. I've got a few questions coming in from Go people. They're Go very varied. I just want to make one point. I see you've got your hoodie on today. But I did notice that it was a polo hoodie, and I know how much they cost, unless you, of course, got it at the uh, reject shop or Poundland, but it doesn't look like one of those, so it looks like and a very... And you get it a good price with the techniques you gave me. I just want you to remember that we, we, all, noticed, uh, we all noticed that. Absolutely crucial to me, first impressions, and I teach negotiation skills. And uh, I say you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. You need to be there early. You need to greet people as they come into the meeting. You need to choose where you're going to sit. You have to be careful about your handshake because uh, you don't want to give a dominant, I'm really more important than you handshake. I suss people out on their handshakes the second I meet them, and when I'm with my pal Martin, he susses them out, and we have a little powwow. Oh, you know, that person's going to be a bit difficult. They've got such a I'm more important than you handshake. So I say to people, check, check your handshakes. Yeah. Even though handshakes might be a thing in the past, we may only be talking about handshakes from, from now on, might we? Jeff, we've got Lynn Hartley on. Lynn, Lynn uh, I work with Lynn down in Exeter. She's on the NHS procurement team. So, Lynn, thanks wow. so much for uh, being with us today and uh, for the fantastic job everybody in the NHS is doing. How does she encourage her NHS procurement people to keep an eye on being positive and giving celebrity service during these difficult times? What a great question. Over to you, Jeff, and I'll help you out if you're struggling with that one. Can you repeat that again? So how does she... How does she keep an eye on herself being positive and yeah. her team giving celebrity service during these difficult times? Yeah. And I can tell you, you can imagine what the NHS procurement teams are doing, trying to, uh, trying to procure um, face masks and all the, uh, all the kit. And I'm sure they're doing a fantastic job, despite what those commentators are asking the Prime Minister or, um, or the Health Secretary on there is there's something, Lynn, that you do. Look, <laughs> the world is a, is a million miles an hour at the minute, and all of a sudden you'll go in to 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 the hospital or to the clinic, and you'll talk, you know, celebrity service. How can we do this? How can we do this? Um, yes, watch a couple of my videos and, and and get some things that get some ideas to go to the team. But and, and I say this to every organisation, every business that I work with, um, create a celebrity service wall. Create a celebrity service wall somewhere in your staff room, somewhere. And what you have on there is great pieces of service that you and your team have delivered, you've said, you've done. Um, you will have lots of these thank you cards. They're low, they're, every time you go in the hospitals, you see thank you cards. So I see them littered out all over. But keep an eye on the team. Overhear what they say to a patient, either over the phone or, and just not reward but recognize, recognize. And I say easily once a month uh, to organizations of any, any, any sector, get your team together 
and recognize the people who have delivered celebrity service. One of my clients, actually the people who answer my telephone on my local number is a company called Moneypenny. And I talk, they're in the book, they're in the front of the book, Derek, there's six pages devoted to Moneypenny. And um, they have, what, they ha what they've got inside their business, their head headquarters is a mojo wall, a mojo wall. But they've got, they're professionally printed and mounted on the wall, all the various things and their teammates are mentioned all over the wall and they proudly promote how good they are individually. What a wonderful thing for the staff members to walk past and see their name professionally printed, not just on a scrap piece of paper on a pin board. That, that has got to stop. But actually really recognize these people. So it's the one thing I would say straight away is go in there, start handing out sweets and rewards and, and, and what have you, if you wish, but recognize the great people, but physically, visually promote them for everybody in that hospital to see. It's one of the greatest things you'll do. Have, have a visual reminder of what amazing looks like. Because when we're not having a very good day, when somebody's not a bit of a downer, you, this, this wall can inspire you. It's Jeff, a couple, Jeff, a couple more questions because I'm conscious of your time, which we're very, very for, grateful for. I've got, I've got three ones off, Derek. Just keep going. <laughs> um, quick one. Where can we obtain a cinemagraph from Tim oh, in Dallas? Yes, um, cinemagraph. There is a, there was, I've not seen it for, I've not checked for a while, but there is a, there is a cinemagraph website, cinema, that cinemagraph, all one word, dot com dot co dot uk whatever it may be but there's a website and it's got dozens and dozens of examples what i did with, with my photographer who's also my video guy who was just brilliant a guy called ian west ian west um go to your local photographer or your video guy your your local tech guy that you've maybe used and ask them about it can you create a cinemagraph for me or for our organization um, so that's the first thing I would do is to obtain that. This was so new when it came out. I, I, I talked to Ian and I said, have you seen this? He said, yeah. He said, I said, how do you do it? He said, I don't know, but I'll find out. And he found out and he did it. He, he went to the depths of Google, how to create a cinemagraph. I'm not technically minded, Derek, but he did it for me. Um, so Ian West, uh, Ian West Photography, if anybody wants to contact him direct, um, it's not his speciality, but he did it for me, but also contact maybe your local photographer, videographer, and just put the question to them. Can you create a cinemagraph for our business? One more question. One more question, Jeff, before I stop the recording and then we'll stay on the line. A quick, quick answer to Kevin. Advice for us to deliver celebrity service during lockdown. How will they speaking business or any business actually that's the real question change yeah. after lockdown um do we think it will change like it did after 9 11 um graham jones calls it the new normal i think he's uh, got that from somewhere else what will the new normal be i wonder you got that's a minute it. jeff only i'm sorry that's a you know if i knew the answer uh, me and you would would be on a desert island somewhere i suppose Look, what can we do celebrity service in this time of lockdown? I've been doing a few things. First of all, I started to write the fourth book. I wanted to come out of lockdown with something positive, right? Now, half of Facebook right now, their goal is to finish Netflix. All right? That's not me. We can watch a bit of stuff, but that's not me. I wanted to come out with this. When our grandchildren turned to us and said, Grandma, Granddad, what did you do during, during coronavirus 2020? I want to say I wrote this, I created this, and I want to be proud of the thing that I created and did in the time that I had. But I've also been supporting clients. There's lots of people out there, Derek, you and I know are repackaging their stuff to sell it back to clients to say, oh, we can do webinars and, and, and give me money. It's not my style, not my style. I have just reached out to clients and said, you know where I am. If I can do anything for you, please let me know. This is, this is one of the reasons why we're doing this video now. We're hopefully going to give some value to people who are listening, hopefully. 
but I've got a list on here of all the postponed events that I've got, but I've got a list of clients I've done, I've done videos for. 10 minute motivational videos, pep talks, ideas, stories. I'm not charging for them. Why would I charge my client for them? I came into this lockdown trying to help. I'll keep you motivated, hopefully with some, some positive stories and news, but I'm also sharing positive stuff. So across my social media channels, I either share the fun stuff, but I'm sharing great examples of celebrity service from other clients. So I think, was it Lynn who was, was she in Exeter from the NHS? NHS, yeah, Lynn. Exeter. One of the great examples I saw two weeks ago uh, was the Drew Arms in Exeter pub, the Drew Arms. And they literally had a freezer full of food. They put it outside and they had a little box and it said, an honesty box, put some money in here. And half of the money goes towards the, the, the replacement of the food, half goes towards defibrillators. And they put this little sign out. The sign went viral. It was a lovely thing to do. They weren't making money. They didn't want to make money. They wanted to help. And I think that's the one big thing I would say from, from anybody watching and listening right now. Have you, re have you reached out to your clients and said, look, how can I help? Can I do something for you? Nine times out of ten, I'll say, no, you're, you're fine, Jeff. We're all right, but thanks very much. It, it is an interesting thing, and it's a wonderful thing that's happened, actually, and I didn't, I didn't foresee it. I've gone back to a lot of my clients and said, look, for every great cloud, there's a silver lining. I decided to write my fourth book. Would you like to be in it? And all the doom and gloom and furlough and all the doom and gloom and missing business, I've had, the emails I've had, Jeff, you've just made my week. Really, I'm going to be in your book. I said, yeah, I would like to interview you. Can we do an interview of all the great things that you do? And that's, what, that's how I've been using my Zoom time over the last two weeks, interviewing people, writing the stuff, but reaching out to clients and saying, can I help? Fantastic. That's fantastic, Jeff. I'm, I'm concerned about the time. What we're going to do now is, um, is uh, switch the recording off in a second and, uh, and then we'll stay on the line, uh, you and I, for as long as anybody <laughs> wants to be on it. I just want to uh, uh, send you one of my uh, cards, Jeff, because you've been absolutely fantastic in this interview. What can people do differently? Well, you can do anything. You can get some cards like this printed with some... Uh, with some quotes on the back for people. Um, keep smiling on the bottom, it creates endorphins. Uh, endorphins make us feel good. Jeff, you've been fantastic and thanks for joining me. Jeff, I'm just gonna get your commitment to join us again because I think there's a few stories we missed and uh, there's a few things we had fun with when we were um, running the uh, Professional Speaking Association, negotiating tactics, ideas, sales issues that we so I think maybe in two or three weeks' time, we'll do the same. Um, Jeff, a couple of people asking how they get in contact with you. Yeah. Uh, you can go to the mothership. So that's jeffram.com, G-E-O-F-F-R-A-M-M.com. You can email me at jeff at jeffram.com. And it's not, not the hardest name to find, but YouTube channel is over 100 videos on YouTube. Help yourself. You'll actually see the 20-minute, 20 20-minute 20 talk. Uh, in Dallas. So that's on there on my YouTube channel, Facebook, LinkedIn. And if anybody, obviously, so I've got a trilogy of books. There's two marketing in one celebrity service. I've got a trilogy. Now you can go to Amazon if you wish. If anybody on this call now would like the trilogy at a very special price, I'm, 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 I'm just doing a sort of a, a, an offer while we're on lockdown at the minute. So if anybody wants the trilogy in a very shiny envelope, What's your best deal, Jeff? Let's not mess around. Okay. The $12.99 each. Are you ready for this? $19.99. $19.99 for all three. I will pay for postage. I will pay for packing. I will use my one exercise walk <laughs> to go to the post office and send them to you. <laughs> Can you negotiate that, please, Derek? <laughs> Jeff Ram, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I will stop the recording now and uh, I'll throw it open. I'll throw everything open for questions. Thank you so much, Jeff. Take care. Thank you.